speaking of the show, uh, it is May 30th in the year of our clownishness, 2024. Yona, happy Bilderberg. Bill Burger. Yeah, how are you celebrating this year? Um, well, who is it? That, is it Sublime that does that? I smoke two joints in the morning and I smoke two in the afternoon. And yeah, that, I, I I got two for each hand. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> got some double fist action going on. Yeah. Oh, oh, wait, wait, but wait, folks, that's not all. Uh oh. There's more. I mean, I think if I do this just right, you can see in the bottom parts, like, it, it's like a, a marijuana sign. Anyway. Yeah, it's, well, it's like a, um, like, what are the, the, the bags that they have at, like, the events that they would send people to in the before times? Like, you'd go to the thing for your training or whatever, and they'd have, yeah. like, a gift bag for you at the end of it. It's just bunch of random shit or whatever yeah, it's like the, one the, of those but actually with purpose room. yeah it literally puts the green in green room there, there you, you go, go. Um, and let's see here for those that are keeping track what is it there's a snowball run well i do i do have a public service announcement for mango the audience lava, mango mint deep bread Medellin, um apples and bananas again. I think you did that one last week, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And L.A. Baker, which I, I met Baker before. He's kind of wild. He's got the dreadlocks and everything. Very hyper. Baker's very hyper. Oh, anyway. yeah, yeah, he is. He is. But it's good. <laughs> he's he's the perfect hype man. Uh, yeah, I do, I do want to really like... dig in the Yona. You know what I'm saying? We went nice. out. We, we burned the pipe like two or three days in a row, man. And then, then he got to where he's like, Hey, Yona! And so, like, I now I know, like, anytime I shout out Baker, like, he'd be shouting the Yona out, man. He was digging my music, too. Right on. Fuck yeah. And, I, anyway. Yeah, I do I, need sorry, to, uh, yeah, we've, we've had uh, a development here at the studio over the course of the last 24 hours. Uh, for those with very keen ears in the audience, if... You happen to hear what sounds like a goat being murdered violently. It's just a cat in heat. Don't, don't like drop a dime or anything. Don't bring people to the door. Everything's normal. She's just really loud, like, you know, some women are. So, or as they say, and, um, uh, what what is it called again? Castellano, Espanol. No preocup, no preocupate cuando escucha el chivo enojado. Sí, sí, señor. Um, or uh, you know, don't don't get worried when you hear the um angry goat noises. Anyway, <laughs> That's right. Um, chivo, and and yes. and uh, sopa de chivo, fucking killer. Way better than the sopa de uh, cuya. Yeah. They uh sopa de cui. C U I. Yeah. Cui. There you go. Uh cui is um or cui. Yeah, cui, like gooey, but cui with a C. Right. Cui is um the Ecuadorian word for uh guinea pig, which, you know, in the United States they're pets. In Ecuador they're livestock. Correct. You'll find them up and down on the street, um, roasted on a little chozito, a little chozo stick. Yep. That goes right through the butthole and then comes out the mouth. And they got it on a little crank there where they yeah. can do it rotisserie style. That's right. Um, and so I asked my friend when I was first down there, I was like, you know. I've heard they're tasty. How did it get the name Cooey? And he explained to me, he said, here, let me take you down to the sidewalk. So we go down the sidewalk. He goes over there. And and he, it's a big joke to all of them. And so he goes over to the cook that's on the pariada, the the barbecue pariada, um, and uh, the you know the, with the carne asada. I've got all that shit going on. But over on the end, sounds got all delicious. This, um, various rodent meats, we'll say, lots of rodent action going on down there, um, and pan flutes. Lots of pan flute too. Lots. 
El Condor Pasa. Anyways, you know, we're in the Cordillera de los Andes. And anyway, so we get to the end. He asked him, he's like, you know, asking him, where did he get his name? And they're like, oh, he's like, here. And he grabs one that's live. Takes the Chozo. Puts it right up its ass. And the thing goes, Gleed! like holy shit i thought you would have like killed it first and then i looked down and well he did oh, kill it, it it's dead yeah it's dead because it comes out the other end you know yeah. you have to be able to do that in order to put it on the rotisserie because if you're only putting it like halfway through it's not gonna work the, the i wouldn't eat there correct. those people don't know what they're doing But, uh, you know, the thing that I like to do with it every time, well, three times I had the, the kui, the guinea pig. And every time, just like whenever I would eat seafood, um, luckily I got to share that moment with my wife. And so I could turn the head of the whatever I was eating and turn the head toward her so that the eyes were looking at her. You know, whether it's a crab or a lobster or a guinea pig, I always turn the head, you know, and. I actually saved the legs from the last one that I ate, kind of like as a lucky rabbit's foot, but they were so fucking greasy because they'd already been deep fried and <laughs> not the same as a lucky rabbit's foot. Um, <laughs> not quite the same thing, no. Still had that in the freezer box at one time, but I think, uh, I think wife finally threw that shit away. Why, off, why yeah. did, why, why did you keep the feet? I don't know, man. It seemed like, or no, wait a second. Wait a second. Uh, yeah. Fucking Cancun, man. Goddamn Aduana Mexicana got my fucking pasta de cuy. Motherfucker. Yeah. Well, that's what happens when, uh, when you go over on the East Coast there. Like, those those people are not honorable. Or at least that's what I was told when I was on the West Mere Coast. Tan profundo yeah. en mi culo. Anyway, they're like, um, go up to, to Puerto Vallarta. That's fine. You'll be fine up there. Don't go over to the east side, though. That's all corporate. Man. Yeah, for those that are wondering what the Aduana is, um, just think, um, you know, I want to travel to Mexico, but I don't want to go through a lot of shit. Well, sorry, motherfuckers. You have to go through a, the aduana, la aduana, which means customs and inspection and rifling through your luggage and taking your heirloom Cherokee red corn seeds and your oh seriously lucky your lucky greasy half-eaten guinea pig foot. You motherfuckers! Wow. Sorry, though, they I didn't do that to me. Harm. Well, that that was at the landing from because you know we'd flown in from the um, Aeropuerto Barajas in um, Madrid, or, uh, directamente right there to. Uh, oh, so you were Duke coming Qatar. from Spain? Yes. Oh, no Spania. wonder they thought you had stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're like, oh, we got these everything. European motherfuckers coming over. We're gonna we're gonna make some money today. Yeah, they they went deep in that. Plus, I mean, you know, we both had two massive fucking suitcases with pretty much everything that we owned. Because you know, we had traveled, we'd moved to Ecuador, and we were moving back home. But on the way home, we took a um. Oh, come on. What's that Scrabble word I'm looking for? Circuitous route. Um, so, you know, we went from Cuenca to Guayaquil and then Guayaquil to Madrid, dropped off most of the luggage, then did the European tour, and then on, and then finally from Madrid back to Mexico, and then Mexico back to West, my God, Virginia. Um, then you, you know, you'll know you're in West Virginia because even the chickens and the roosters, when they walk around and scratch in the dirt, they all say, my God, buck, 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 bu
fucking amazing. Anyway, and, it, and they uh, even know how to make a pepperoni roll too. That no shit. Is Moorfield still a big chicken town? I don't know if you know that. Oh yeah. Is it? Oh yeah. Because I know yeah, they had a couple of factories there that supplied Tyson pretty much has, all the um, jobs for the town. Tyson has some operations in West Virginia. There's a lot of slaves. I oh, mean, yeah. um, workers in West Virginia. It's open for business. It says so on the sign. Right. Well, it was a uh, Rockefeller state, so of course it was open for business. What are you talking about? Well, well yeah, Everybody I mean, knows that. That's literally what it, it says like, on the yeah. uh, airport terminal building yeah. when you land at uh, Chuck Yeager Field. That's a CRW. Um, uh, and you walk into the terminal building. The airport terminal building is called the uh, John Davison Rockefeller the, the Third. Um, I'm sorry, the Third. No, you said it right the first time. Yeah, yeah. John Rockefeller. Yeah, because he was a fucking shit heel. Jay. God, he was a piece of work. Jay boy. um, Senator Jay Rockefeller from the great state of West Virginia. That's right. Which is now um, governated by um, Boss Hogg and his darling fat-ass dog. Anyway, baby, baby dog. Is the, the, what is it, the, the state attorney general, I guess that's like the top lawyer in the state uh-huh. or whatever, uh, is, is, is that Cletus? Yes. Yes. And um, Roscoe P. Coltrane is in charge of the uh, West Virginia State Police. That, I don't know if I've ever really gone through the deep dive on the um oh I need another good word here raucous raucous scandal that uh, blew up out of the West Virginia State Police which oh, that's I right. did, a, did a couple videos on it um that we that we put up on the Daegu Cloud that that may be in the big um uh edit heap that we have where there's all these hours of fucking footage that um, folks, you know, I haven't gotten the time to edit it. Drizzle hasn't gotten the time to edit it or clip it out. We're busy and we need help. And uh, th- this is the time. Is it ten twelve yet? Well, it'd be nine twelve central. So yeah, 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 yeah. value for value, as our good friend Adam Curry has pointed out before. That's, that's so, definitely a way to provide value, especially uh, if you have that skill or you want to develop that skill. Um, it's a any, it's a good way to, to get help started and practice. All forms of help and assistance are appreciated. Oh, absolutely. Now, I meant to do uh, a shout out last night for uh, Ryan C, who uh, heard the call to action on Saturday night and uh, stepped up to the plate and returned a little bit of value to his Liberty radio. And we do appreciate that. But since I forgot it last night, I'm just going to save it for Saturday night. That way he can get, you know, because more than likely he'll be listening Saturday night. I don't know if he's listening tonight. I don't know if, if most people actually tune in every single night. I don't know. I have no clue. I think uh, I know the same people tune into this show all the time. I think I was tuned in last night because I remember it was like uh, it was like new music and stuff, and then it was like Bill Cooper again. Oh, you and, were uh, high, weren't you? Bruh, <laughs> you know, it was kind of short on the. Uh, servings there but um nobody released that, anything last week what do you want me to do that, there was some really good stuff there well i i released uh the the new version of um uh fuck education yeah yeah i did sleep oh, on that i actually i actually guilty as that. charged yeah I could have played that I, last night. I actually finished that Tuesday, though. 
I don't know what the cutoff is. Well, and is you played for... it on Town Hall, too, right? Right. Well, be- because, you know, way back when, when I made the remix, because I made the song Edgemication last August. Uh, it was just kind of basic. And then I I just added an intro with Richard on it back in February and put Richard with Michael Badnerick. Well, then I get this email from Grand Theft World and, you know, signed by Richard Grove on, I don't know, like the Friday before Memorial Day. And the basic gist of the email is like, hey, this Memorial Day, let's remember Michael Badnerick and all the other people that have fought for the ideal of freedom and liberty and everything else. And, and that immediately made me think, bro, I've got the Michael Badnerick song. And it's kind of basic, and it's got Richard on it. I made a video of it when I had the original version without Richard. But now I've had the version with Richard since February, and I still haven't remade the video since last August. And it's kind of basic. Now that I know what I know, and now that Dead Fella hooked me up with the plugins where I can design my own percussion and bass sound and my own 808 line, and I got this other plugin where I can do the rhythm shit, and then, you know, I, that way it's all 100% original. Completely original. It's fucking awesome, man. It's like, you know, like the last four or five songs, man, it's been all original. Every sound, everything, it's 100% samples of me. It's fucking awesome, man. Nice. Ah, like, um, the one I made last night, I, you know, I started writing lyrics about this funny story because um, long ago I did this song called um, Babylon Beret where I rap in Arabic and English and maybe French. I meant to send that song to Richard Medhurst because he's one of the few people that could probably listen to that whole song and get it because Richard speaks French. In Arabic, in English. There you go. Anyways, oh, wow. um, um, Babylon Beret. Uh, you know, when I got done making that song and I was writing the lyrics to it, um, uh, you know, I, I come to find out the the Chevy Malibus that were sent that were you know they had this contract that um, Saddam Hussein all of his um, Top brass, everyone, you know, was going to get new Chevy Malibus. 84 or 19, was it 1984? Why the fuck does everything happen in 1984, George Orwell? Anyway, not everything um, does. Because now you got to remember, at that time, 1972, we went off the gold standard. That was 12 years prior. You know what? I have to be specific here. This is 1984 Saddam Hussein, who we, as in the CIA and the American. It was also the 1984 MIT. Chevy Malibu, which is a completely different automobile from what we have today, even. Right. Um, well, turns out when they got to Iraq, they fell apart and Iraq didn't want them. So then. What? Why somehow, wouldn't they want them? Canada was finagled into taking on and trying to get rid of what was it, sixteen thousand um, Iraq rejected Malibus or Iraqabu for short. Um, so, anyways, you know, I'm sitting here writing lyrics for this Iraqabu song, uh, and I got like one verse into it, and then I started. Um, making the music for it and I got all carried away and ended up spending like six or seven hours making that fucking instrumental song and passed out and never finished writing the words or recording the lyrics yet but anyways turned out good turned out good nice uh, yeah you may have heard it already I, I posted Arakabu, um in a couple places on uh, Grand Theft World and the New Prisoners. Or, well, on Telegram. 
That's where I throw shit first, normally. Grand Theft World Liberty Radio, the Newsy Beat, and then the new prisoner. I don't know if this is going to show up very well. This is a tiny picture. Yeah, see, we're half covering it up. God damn it. No oh, we're trying to, to get some. That. Are you trying to get some about Rackaboo action going on? No, there? I was trying to get a 1984 Chevy Malibu. And I found a picture of one, but it's tiny. And it's like right in the middle of the screen, which is ridiculous. Well, here is the. But that's also because Google sucks. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Let me see if I can't share. Uh oh. Aha. Blam. Booyah. You see that? You see that right there? Boom, right there, yeah. Blammo. There it is. The Iraqi taxi. The Arakaboo. Teamwork makes the dream work. Blammo. That's right. And somehow, Detroit I mean, that was a, that was muscled a, fucking Canada into selling all these things. And so it became a cult classic car in Canada. Well, in America, too. I knew yeah. people looking, looking for Malibus. Yeah. But particularly the 1981 Arakaboo. Those 15,000 were bought by the Canadian government, and then the Canadian government sold them off in different provinces. Most of them were sold off in, um, oh, I'm probably going to say this wrong, but um, Alberta and Saskatchewan. Maybe it's Alberta. Alberta? Um, um, yeah. Um, I believe it's Alberta. Manitoba? Manitoba? Manitoba. Manitoba? Something like that. Um, and, and the other one, um, Octogenario or Ontario. I, I, oh, it's Canada. Anyways. Yeah. Well, there, um, there were French people up there, so everything is kind of screwy. Yeah. yeah, and then it's Quebec, not Queerbec. Or, but, I, you know what? I, I went to Université Laval up in there. Is it Quebec? It, it's Queerbec. It, it is. It's Queerbec. Totally. Well, yeah, yeah, that's where the French people are, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, that makes sense. That makes nothing but sense. Well, French-like. You know... French, French-ish. French Canada, Yona, does not pay attention to us at all. I don't think we should pay attention to them. You know who does pay attention to us? Uh, the Netherlands again? Or Israel? Nope, nope. Both of those are wrong. Um, think of Slovak recent, Republic. No, think of recent internet memes. Recent viral internet memes. <coughs> hmm. I don't know, I've been working a lot lately. The, the, all right. Out of this. It was Pooh Bear. All right, Xi Jinping checked Whoa. in from China to uh, see what we were talking about last week. Were we talking about him? I don't think we talked about him last week. I don't even think we mentioned China last week. You know what? We, we I, I will dig around in the old vault here, and we will throw out an encore presentation of my video featuring uh, Richard Nixon Henry Kissinger, and Meow Meow Say Tongue. Um, and for those that know, you know, when a cat licks you with its tongue, it's kind of like sandpaper. Um, uh, meow Say Tongue. Uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, Chairman it's Meow. Called, uh, Tony CC named one of his cats after. Oh, I remember the name of the song. Oh, thank God. CC Penis. Yeah. <laughs> you know, CCP-like. Right. It's got a certain CC penis to it. Yeah. I always like that, that track. That's a good one. 
Well, no. So we had China uh, <laughs> wanting to know what we were talking about. Uruguay. Down in South America. Yeah. Apparently, I, I, do you have some folks Uruguay. down in Uruguay? We were talking about Uruguay and Montevideo, okay. as well yeah. as uh, Bolivia. We were talking that's about right. that. That's, that's right. where so. um, Che Guevara was killed. And we were getting into that whole Che shit. Were we? I don't remember that. From from Che to Pinochet, you know, the, the CIA fuckery with the Latin American gold fidel oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know all about it. I just don't remember us talking about it. And oh, I, well, I guess we, we just did. Well, yeah, we did just now. <laughs> but I, I guess you know that uh, the the thumbnail of King Chuck, I think it got us on a list. Because oh. now there's like always somebody from the UK checking out our stuff. It could be Dennis, though. Because I told... Um... I told Kingsley about our show. Yeah, but he doesn't comment. I would think Kingsley would have uh, an opinion on most of the things that we talk about and would express that opinion freely. Uh, that's true. If maybe, he has maybe he just yells at his phone. I don't know. Uh, <coughs> he... Um, we were going back and forth uh, about, a, I don't know. Oh, God damn, this Jenny could. How strong is this shit? Wait, are you smoking two at once? Oh, I forgot I had that old one already lit. Well, that's awkward. And it's just me. Um, 36.52% total. God damn, man. Yeah. Wow. Ooh, pre-roll five pack, harvest date, 031924. There you go. Not a paid so promotion, ladies and gentlemen. March 19th. Wow, that's only like about two months ago. Yeah. Right, that's pretty fast. So well, that, that's how you know it's fresh. Activation time to buzz. Fucking immediate. No need for vulgarity. Come on, dude. Bro. I, I get was it. Gonna say, it says fucking on there. I guess it probably does. I get it. I mean, you know, I could have just put like immediate in like all caps or, so, or you know, exclamation point. Really need for vulgarity. Anyway, it's true, though. I mean, you hit it once and it's fucking immediate. Anyway. Um, that's good stuff. Yeah, I, I got to put it out. Wow, man. I, I'm about to hit the ground in a beetle ball like Toby Keith. Shout out to Holy Brent shit. We got, we got 90 more minutes to go, so pace yourself. Uh, what, let me get my go juice here. Get that uh, go juice. That'd be funny if I just had to like start doing shit on the fly because Yona had smoked himself retarded. Was just... Uh, hey, I... At least I didn't sleep through my show again Monday <laughs> night. Big shout out to Six for not giving up on me and doing the, the rebroadcast there. Um, that was my Memorial Day show, which ended up being a super duper bonus oh, shit. show. It was Memorial Day this week, wasn't that, it? That show ended up running like six hours or something. Or, Damn. Uh, was that yeah. on purpose? No. Uh, we got toward the end, and, and another friend jumped in, and we ended up having two or three guests, and um, we just made rounds on everything. I, you know, it, really, I need to go through that show and clip some things out. I, I've never clipped up a show before, and I obviously need to start doing that. Why? Because, I mean... I've seen how the the clips from Get It Back Harder, you know, do do well, and you know, having oh, we had one take off on TikTok yesterday, like McNugget sized portions, bite sized portions, where you know, it's not not everyone has two or three or however many little fat nuggets, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. 
Well, that's uh, why the show is called Get Fact Harder. Because we just keep throwing nuggets at you. <clears throat> you may not get the whole story in every show, but as time goes <clears throat> by, a much larger image will begin to develop. So, what do you call the quick little fact? Fact so quickly. Factoid? No. No. No, that's not it. What was the the name that Owen Benjamin had for his uh, chicken snack? Was it something like Nigglets? Yeah. Yeah. Factless. Factless? Backling. I don't know, does he have uh, a trademark on that name? Does anybody know? Is anybody even watching? I don't know. Oh, there's Tom Cooper. What up, Tom? I, I got it. Little factors. Little factors? Little factors. That's closer. Or, Lil. Or Lil. Just, L-I-L. Lil facts. Lil facts. A little fact and around. There it is. Little fact. Little fact and around. Little, a little, a little, a little L I L yeah. fact and around, and that's the I N apostrophe. Little fact and around. Yeah. And there you go. That that that's a whole series of get back to harder. Oh, dude, they're taking the internet by storm. It's crazy. Man. It's crazy. The clips actually get more views than the show does. I don't know how that works. Honestly, sure. don't. I shared. Oh yeah, we, yeah, we got that other thing. Let's see. There's other shit going on. We'll worry about a bracket bit later. Um, let's see. Oh, we're back to that now. No, that's all right. No, yeah, that's not. Let, let, I'm just. I need to get rid of the 1981 Chevy Malibu Iraqi taxi here. Bam. There we go. All right. Do you see uh, uh, any call balloons? Call me off my game, Saddam Hussein. See? Anyway, what'd you say? You seen any balloons in the sky up your way past couple days? I did see some, um, quite a bit of aircraft today. A lot of military aircraft, as well as military vehicles on the Norfolk Southern and CSX mainline. Like, really? Heading what direction? Everything heading to Norfolk. Really? That's interesting. Humvees, deuce and a half. Bunch of motor pool shit. I mean, I didn't see any, like, artillery or tanks. Just a bunch of fucking, like, logistical type stuff. Trucks and pickup trucks and bigger trucks and deuce and a half trucks and five tons. All on flat cars, you know, going down the line on the train. It's like a circus train, except instead of animals, you've got like um, machines for empire and death. Anyway, mm -hmm. so. hmm. it was great, you know, here. It is That's right interesting. After, right after Memorial Day and look up in the sky and there's Blackhawk choppers and, you know, uh, oh, what do they call them? Is there a base near you? Is it the C-130, C-150? One of those with the four propellers. Um, yeah. Yeah, you got the Kentucky Air National Guard there at the uh, Ashland, Kentucky, Worthington uh, field there. Airport. Anyway. Hmm. Uh, they're everywhere, man. Well, yeah, they are everywhere. I mean, they're the plus, enforcers of the state. We've got the United States Coast Guard up and down the Ohio River here, too. They they patrol the river. Well, yeah, but that's normal, right? Well, yeah. Like, yeah that's, that's not unusual. That's why we called them puddle pirates in, in, the, in the military. Coasties. They're puddle pirates. 
they, they guard the puddle inside the country. Anyway, it's true. Somebody's got to do it. Not everybody gets to go on a sexy, you know. No, I just had a year and a half of, deployment uh, on an aircraft carrier halfway to freaking Diego Garcia and something. Some people get stuck, you know, guarding the Houston ship channel for six months. Yeah. No, trying I, not to die of complete boredom. Anyway. I, I had an image of a Coast Guardsman with a peg leg and a hook. That was a good mental image. Yeah, I would think of more of like a retired coasty as being um, bald spot on head, white band, members only jacket, wearing. Um, what is so that? a sharp Green. dressed man is what you're talking uh, about. Yeah, Crocs with socks. I think somebody did a song Coast about that. Crocs, no, Birkenstocks with toe socks. There we go. That guy. That guy. You look down and you're like, wow. Toe socks? Really? On top of Norwegian cork? The fuck is wrong with you? Anyway. No, there are people like that in the world. I've yeah. seen them with my own eyes. They shop at Walmart. Yeah. Anyway, so. Yeah, that's the motherfucker in uh, self checkout. Like, ooh, I can get, I get over there. He's got all the stuff done. You're like, what? fuck is he doing to the swipe thing? like god damn how long can it take man what the fuck is this guy doing a anyway well you, you might look down and you see the toe socks and you're like yeah. ah, i'm gonna get in the other line it's fucking weirdo yeah. anyway you might want to keep your eye on the skies <laughs> yona and, and just you know make sure there aren't uh, more, any balloons more going chinese through. balloons well, chinese uh spy balloons no, y n yes, but no. So did you hear about North Korea sending a gift to South Korea this week? Oh, are, are they sending balloons too? Yeah. They were sending oh, balloons yes. filled with garbage and excrement. Because poop. <laughs> Poop balloons. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. I tell you, the folks, the stories, they just write themselves. Yeah. Wow. Now, apparently, it was you know in retaliation to uh, there are North Korean dissidents who defected to South Korea. And they were using balloons to send, like, uh, thumb drives with, I don't know, whatever you put on a thumb drive. And stuff, other stuff, over the border. Over the, what do they call it? The demilitarized zone, which is really just a the patch DMZ. of ground. Yeah. They just call it a, a fancy name, and all of a sudden I got, it's I like... I th yeah. this story replenishes my soul like poop balloons over the skies. Of That's the right. Anyways, um, it was just North Korea returning the favor that the dissident South Koreans had been doing for like months or, or probably even years. Some of them like I heard the like one of the things they would send over was like the latest K-pop, like whatever's popular that month or whatever. Just like a whole, you know, thumb drive of K-pop. Uh, oh, my God, that. That's actually worse than a balloon filled with excrement. Right? Oh, like, everybody's God. upset about Kim Jong-un basically, like, you know, chucking crap over the fence. But they're like, nah, go ahead and, and pollute your ear holes. Pollute everybody's ear holes. Poop balloons. Fucking genius. Yep. Fucking genius. And better yet, yeah, there's got to be a way to drop lighting, you know, like flaming bags of poop. Flaming bags of poop. Yeah, I'll tell you what, there's got to be a way to work this in with one of those Yemeni um, stick uh, and twig drones. 
fuck yeah, man. You can build a twig drone for like, what, 18 bucks? Less but than that, probably. The, I don't know what the payload is going to be like with the uh, poop. Probably going to have to dry the poop out. Well, that's why gonna they use, use balloons. Going to have to use low moisture poop. That way, you know, because, uh, you know, it, it's a weight issue in terms of the payload. Because I'm trying to launch poop with uh, Twig Drone. No, you just use helium. Uh, It'll be fine. And and then you can drop the poop just like with a balloon where it's got the, the weight bags. Well, they actually and put every it now and in then the balloon. The weight. It was oh, in the wow. balloon. So when, when you, like, shoot down the balloon, it explodes and goes wow. everywhere. Yeah. It's kind of ingenious, uh, really. Genius. <laughs> Fucking a genius. Wow. Who knew? Who knew Kim Jong un was a master troll? And tonight, uh, we salute you, Dennis Rodman and Pion Yang. Um, of course, Dennis Rodman, former um Chicago Bull, and uh also former international diplomat on behalf of the United States. Chumming it up with Kim Jong Un in North Korea on multiple occasions. Um, to find out more, fuck around. Wait, back to you, Drizzle. Yeah, uh, Whidbey Bear wants to know: Is it a European stick drone or an African stick drone? African stick drone. It does make a difference. Yeah, like like yeah. a Ho Data special made by a uh, Ansar Allah, uh, the Houthis. The Houthis. Guarding the uh, the uh, vagina part of the Red Sea. We, we went over that on a previous episode. Yeah, the uh, Yonah's gynecological map of the Middle East. Anyways, um, well, I have to say I'm very pleased with the poop balloon strategy. I did not have that on my 2024 bingo card, uh, and you know, Kim pulled it out. Credit where credit is due. Wow. Yeah, take notes, Winnie the Pooh Bear. Right. It, it's always the kids. The kids are always the most inventive because, you know, they still have the active imagination. They can think outside of the box because they're not completely in the box yet. You know? So, I'm wondering, um, segue, uh, and cut. Uh, <coughs> Democratic Republic of Congo recently had a failed, uh, well, in this case, I have to say coup d'etat, parce que, parce qu'il parle le français là-bas, because they speak French down there. Yeah, the CIA Um, tried to overthrow their government. And uh, we're talking about... As they do, you know. That's uh, what they get paid for. The big old metropolis across the mighty Congo River from Brazzaville, uh, which used to be called Leopoldville, named after King Leopold of uh, Belgium. Uh, major asshole. Anyways, uh, yeah, that's right. Fuck you, Belgium. And I got friends in Belgium, but anyways, again, fuck you, Belgium. Uh, it's, it, they, it's now called Kinshasa. Uh, one time it was called Zaire. It's the Democratic Republic of, of Congo, or we'll just go with DRC. Keep it short and sweet. Uh, and yeah, there was a failed CIA coup. Well, I would say it was more like a Neapolitan ice cream where you get the three flavors, you know, the chocolate, the vanilla, and the strawberry, because you got some major Mossad and MI6 flavors up in there too, you know. Right. Um, they were all at the party and uh didn't matter because it um, failed. And so I'm wondering... Uh, Let's see, the leader of it, I was wondering what, oh, oh, I remember now. Yeah, they they already killed him. And then there was two accomplices. Yeah, they already killed them. Oh, I I just answered my own question. Um, Yeah. Apparently, justice is swift when uh, there is a failed coup attempt to overthrow the government. Typically, yeah. Um, if, If you fail, you don't live very long. 
Well, Sometimes if that... you succeed, you don't live very long. It's yeah, crazy how that even... works. There wasn't really even much of a trial. They just um, kind of died in a firefight. Anyways, um, gee, that kind of got dark, didn't it? Maybe we should put on the Congo song now. No. Nah. No. Nah. No. Nah. Moving on, I, I I did want to mention something about Ukraine. Um, <laughs> Just to get there, it in the show. We did mention Ukraine. Um, so, uh, about Briar Rose being in heat. Um, oh, yeah? We have to talk about that? Well, we already She's actually quiet Ukraine. at the moment. I have a feeling we'll be invoking the demon. You all think I mean, I'm I joking, but I'm not. I guarantee that uh, Voldemort Zelensky would make the same noises going into withdrawals from cocaine. Cause imagine doing that much cocaine every single day, having like an unlimited bank account. I don't have to imagine it. I just look at Christian Freeland, and I, I have the image right in front of me. Christian Freeland reminds me of like one of those chicks from a meth poster of like, you know, 20 years, like, at 22 and then at 24 and you're like oh my god two years what went happened by, this bitch went to like 40 and like got the crow's feet and like oh my god looks like a semi ran over your face anyway. i'm wondering if she might have early onset parkinson's because it Could looks be. like she's not completely in control of her body all the time right uh, you know she's all jacked like I up. I start thinking about it and I just like my own body just starts moving. It's fucking contagious. I don't know what the fuck it is. And wasn't her granddad like a Nazi newspaper man or something yes. in Ukraine? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fun fact. That was um, less than a hundred years ago. Well, I guess most people probably far. forgotten about it though, right? Yeah, the no, really nobody can really more. remember what happened, you know, 20 years ago, even, or 23 years ago. Grandy Guava. That sounds like fun. It's the only one I haven't tried. Mm. Were you just wow, doing a that's... taste test? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's like... Uh... Maybe like the first time you've ever gone to like, you know, Baskin Robbins and you get the little pink spoon. And you're like, let me go taste that. And let me go taste that. And then you don't get anything. Just walk out the door. You know? Well, no, because yeah. you tasted a little bit of everything. So you're really fucking high. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Were you talking about ice cream? I was thinking weed. Like that'd be a hell of a business. Yeah. Wow. Let me sample that. Let me sample that. All right. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Imagine, like, having a dispensary slash snack bar. Oh, my God. With, like, the, with, you know, you got to have fresh churros. Well, yeah. If you were actually and- able to have, like, you know, uh, a business where you're not going to have the government's thumb on your neck the whole fucking time. But oh yeah, my God. yeah, you know, it's a shame. Grow shop I, and a snack bar. Fuck yeah, I would say that's most a winner. People, most people, I would say it's safe to say most people in the United States have never had a fresh, I mean, fresh made, still crackling when you get it from the oil, fucking churro filled with the fucking. They'll say to let you caramel sauce and then the powdered sugar thrown on top of it. Churro. C H U C H U R R O. Churro. Yes. And you get them from the Churreria, which is the churro guy. I um, I used to get them from Miguel down on the corner. Those were the best ones. Oh my God. <clears throat> It, it's it almost reminds me of like they were maybe fresh. like um the only thing I could compare it to in the United States would be like maybe like when you go to like the county fairgrounds or the county fair and they have the funnel cake 
with the powdered kinda, sugar on it. Kind of, but different. Close. It's close, That's but not the same close, thing. Close, but it's it just churro so much fucking. It, it's it'd got be the like caramel shit, and it's got the crunch, but then it's chewy. Well, it's uh, like if you take a sugar. It's hot. Yeah. It's French. If you take like a sugar donut and you cross it with the funnel cake. Yeah. That's about the only way you're going to get close to a churro. Yeah, because it's got the churiness, but the, the chewiness, but then there's the crunch, but then it's got that caramel, like buttery. It's not really caramel. It's dulce de leche, which is like caramel, but. How creamier, did we get here? Because now I'm buttier, starting to crave one. But butterier, but butterier. Yeah, that, that's a word, right? Butterier. Butterier? More more buttery? More buttery butterier. caramel. Hmm. Butterier. I don't know. I'll do some research on that. You know what? I, I'm going to have to look that word up. That's really important. Wait, wouldn't uh, a butterier be somebody who makes butter? Comparative form of Buttery, more buttery, butterier. Thank you. What does it mean when someone is buttery? Oh my God. Why, Google? You describe someone's words or manner as buttery. You mean that they act insincerely or fawning. Yeah, because you're buttering me up. Yeah. You're being manipulative. Yeah, like like all those comments. Um, yeah, it's boy, rich, you have creamy a great butter. You have a as great Corbett channel here, Yona, and very interesting content, especially the music with the songs and stuff. And if you hit me up on Fiverr, I could help promote your channel way oh, more. Oh no, like, no, no, no! Oh, <laughs> not again! That's not that's not even the latest one. They got one now where they'll pop into your live stream chat and it's just like some random nonsense uh, username and they'll drop a link and be like, this is way better than what you losers are watching. Oh, that literally and I'm sure happened. there's probably people that fall for it because, you know, that happened last we live night. in COVID land. During the show, there was somebody on Rumble that did that. Yeah. And I went and checked the link and it was just, some retarded fucking flip uh, Filipino or something. Like, God damn it, man. And, you know, his English wasn't even that good. Like, uh, come on, dude. That's a interesting come marketing on. strategy, though. I'm just going to bomb other people's live stream chats and insult them. Get them to watch my show. But, like, I oh, yeah, actually I was, try that. Before I forget, uh, I'd mentioned, you know, here lately, I, I, I've put all these instrumentals together and I sent. Jump into the Crowder chat. This is way better than what you losers are watching. Yeah, I sent three instrumental tracks to Dr. Dennis that he said he's going to use on his album that's coming out. I don't know, probably sometime next week. I don't know. He, he's about like Dead Fellow with um, shitting out songs left and right and left and right. Um, which is pretty quick for him. But I mean, I, I, I'm i sure I'll I'll hear more about it from Drizzle. And and I, then I, I also, I have to give a sincere heartfelt thanks once again to Sean and uh, James over at the Media Monarchy uh, for bumping the uh, latest song that um, Dead Bill and I put together with my buddy uh, Tawody from the Eastern Cherokee Band there in Cherokee, North Carolina, the Bluebird song, Blahika, um, which is also the opening song to my newest album, Red Meat, which I think is album 32. Dude, we, we just got link bombed by Diddy the Monster. Oh, right. It, yeah, he called us losers. Well, actually, oh, he called the he didn't call us losers. He called the audience losers, yeah. which is really rude. 
It's yeah, very that rude. Weird. That's awkward. That's not awkward. It's just rude. Diddy the monster is obviously an asshole, but he's but at least he's up front about it. You know, he like he leads with it, lets you know. Whoa, it's another fucked up name though. That's like the third one. Yeah. They were in the the AM wake up chat this morning too. Like we can't fucking detect wow. a pattern. Yeah. It's it's fucking pathetic is what it is. Wow. Oh no, there's there's a comment on education. Oh, oh, yeah, no. I'm sure. Uh-oh. Oh no. Is it another one? What? And this is from 24 minutes ago. Oh god damn it. It's a, a, fuck, man. Just never. Oh, wait. This one's really well written. They're getting That's better. Pretty good English. They are getting better. Yeah, even the grammar is starting to get better. So Hello I think it's there. probably do you think these are large language models that are doing this and it's just the, copy pasta? The, the funny thing is like okay it says that you know it's Peasants Podcast, Hi Yona with the lower cast. And this thing addresses me. Hello there, peasants. Are you eager to make a splash in the digital realm? I, I, you know, I've been called much worse than peasants. Anyways. Well, no, it's they <laughs> think like, your, your, your show like, is your name because yeah. it's a retarded computer. It doesn't know any better. It are has you no eager, context. Are you eager to make a big splash in the digital realm? Let's elevate the success of your channel as a seasoned digital marketing specialist dedicated to cultivating vibrant online communities. I'm poised to propel your channel to new heights. Experience unparalleled growth. Engage directly with your all caps audience and witness your channel thrive. Anticipate the tangible outcomes. Say goodbye to ambiguous assurances. We deliver quantifiable results. Take advantage of tailor-made strategies. Your channel's roadmap to success starts with bespoke solutions. Damn. That's That's some good copy right there. Ready to ignite a digital revolution. Let's ignite your online journey today. Holler at me, Ismail Bossy. They really called the thing bespoke? With bespoke? It's fucking retarded. <clears throat> I, you know, I would have. But no, that was that with- was. Hey, it it was structured exactly the way you want it. It it hit on all the key points. It said all the magic words. It promised results before delivering them. That's the most important thing. But you know, you got to make spoke- people believe that it's going to work before they'll shell out money for it. Although Belief is a hell of a drug, ladies and gentlemen. Bespoke does mean custom or tailor-made. I would have gone with butterier. Yeah. Butterier. Yeah, because most people hear butter and they're like, yum. So it puts mm-hmm. them in their happy place and disarms them yeah. that much more. That's right. You like, you like toast? Eh, it's all right. You like toast with fresh hot butter smeared on it? Oh, now we're talking. <laughs> That's right. Hello, you got my attention. Ugh. But no, do you think these are uh, automated things that are happening? Because obviously they're being directed at specific content creators, right? Yeah. I don't know if like what effect it is that they're trying to have. Because again, it's it's all like just half-assed trying to to get you riled up about something that just doesn't even fucking matter. Well, like, I guess I should try to, like, uh, promote my music or my channel or something. You know, I, I would probably sell more records if I would upload more of these records that I've been making over the past few months. Sorry, Bandcamp. I, I just really busy. And then 
I think, you know, I'm going to upload these songs on Bandcamp and then I like get high and make more songs instead. You know, yeah, you definitely got to upload them because people yeah. want to hear them. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of, you know, normally when I upload new songs to Bandcamp, there's like two or three or four people that'll buy them. And I like make money from it. And so, again, you know, when it comes to the whole promotion of my music and promotion of the channel and promotion of me and I, I just, I really need to put more effort. I, you know, I do try to promote Grand Theft for Liberty Radio and Grand Theft World and stuff, you know. Yeah, you do a hell of a job with that. Uh, Why can't you take it, that skill set and apply it to your own work? I don't even like to use I and me. I, Typically, the Yona just speak of the Yona in the third person because you know it's, hmm. you know, and and to be, you know, what's so amazing is with my total lack of effort in promotion, yet still DJs and other people like Jason over at Illinois on the AM radio and. Uh, James, uh, James Evan Plato down there in uh, New Mexico, and yeah. shout uh, out El Rito in Charleston, West Virginia, and then got CHLY, the one hundred one point seven up there, and uh, what is it, uh, Vancouver, British Columbia, and then my buddy uh, Laurent Yves Winon over there in Liège, Belgium, bumping my stuff. I mean, I. It's just my my stuff's getting passed around and getting played, and um, it's great. Yeah, that's what you want. Uh, you know, I I just sometimes I I wonder, you know, what if I actually like gave a fuck and really like put more of the music out there and did a little bit of promotion? It might make a real difference. Um, but. Never know until you try. That's going to take a lot of time. And I got a lot of. Wasn't that a TV too. commercial for like some Bro. trade What's school or something back in the 80s? Been spending a lot more time with the kids because they're only kids for so long. And, um, I mean, I, I would say I'm just lazy, but actually, I've just been really fucking busy because, yeah. um, there's been a lot of it's, shit going on. It's either that or poverty. And sometimes both. You work really hard and you barely have any time to do anything and you're still poor. But um, you're happy. whole point is find your happy place. Hmm. And dream of being in that happy place even when you're not. There you go. It does help the day go quicker. Right. When you're uh, <clears throat> stuck doing something you don't want to be doing just to be able to pay the bills. Not that I know anything about that. <laughs> you know, like, for example, you know, if you just sit there and drink coffee drinks for hours and hours and hours, and then you have to poop, it's going to take a while. Because liquid poops are messy and anyways, but. You know, and you don't really want to waste that time. You don't want to be stuck on the toilet for 15 minutes. But if you're on the clock. Oh, it's so much better. Company time. That's right. Now you're I think taking we're actually shit playing on that the tomorrow night. Time. Let me check. I think it's now, on the playlist this week. Now what was a dreary task that was dreaded. It's now become something kind of pleasant. And who cares if it takes me 15 minutes to wipe every fold of the hemorrhoids hanging out of my asshole right now? I'm doing it on company time. Getting paid to wipe my own ass. Cha-ching! And flush. Wash, rinse, repeat. Yeah. And then you get out, the manager's like, huh, did you fall in? <laughs> like, I'll wait till the wind whips up behind me. And then they'll be like, oh, God. It's like, you, you, you guys got a spray can or something? Like, it's like, God, man, it's like you're sticking up the whole rest of the fucking 
the whole dining <laughs> smells like your ass. Like, well, I probably should, I probably should have closed the door, but I left it propped open. <laughs> My bad. Taste the Yona, motherfuckers. I, I told you I had the shit. What'd you think I was in there doing? Now you know. You can taste it. You do seem to be fixated on that, though. Especially lately. Pizza? Is it because of the kids? Pizza? Changing diapers? Yeah. And, yeah. 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 Constant. Constant. Uh-oh. Did we lose? Well, we lost me. Shit. 